My name's Chris, and I repair my own audio equipment, and I also show you how to repair yours. So let's get started. If you haven't already, please subscribe. A common issue with the Pioneer SX550, as well as other units, is the power switch. Watch these bulbs, the dial lamp bulbs, as I turn on the power switch. Look at them flicker. Hope you guys can see that flickering. They're flickering, they're flick, and then all of a sudden they go bright. Well, that's an issue with the power switch, and I'm going to show you guys how to repair that. Getting to the switch is a little bit of a pain. You have to remove the face plate, which is not that difficult, but that still doesn't get you to the power switch. You have to pretty much disassemble the front of the unit to be able to get access to that switch. Because without doing that, there's just no way to get it out of the chassis. As I've spoke to you guys in the past, my desoldering tool, what a lifesaver. That's all I can say. If you ever do this regularly, you will obtain one of these devices because it makes unsoldering these pins so easy. You don't have to be a genius. You just put that hot gun right there and push a button and it just cleans the solder right out of those holes in a way that is very difficult if you don't have one of these type of guns. You can also use a solder sucker to remove the solder, or you can also use solder wick, but neither of these methods are my preferred method. I also prefer a washing machine to do my laundry. So with the pins unsoldered, I'm able to reach in from the top and work that power switch out of there. It's a little bit tight in here, that power transformer doesn't move so it's a little bit tight and you've got to pass the tuner string but it's not too difficult and you're able to work it right out of there and then I can work on it down on the test bench and take it apart. There's a couple small nuts that you have to remove on the back of the switch to be able to open it and these come loose quite easily with a pair of needle nose pliers. You've just got to take those off along with a metal bar and a couple small washers. I've taken a similar switch apart and I know there's nothing to really worry about of it falling apart when I open it, but you should always use caution when opening a switch because sometimes you'll get a surprise. With the nuts removed, the switch just slides right on off and now I'll be able to open it up and clean those contacts that are causing the issue. So you've got to do a little bit of loosening to get it apart. It's just press fitted together and like anything you're taking apart just take it slow, take it easy. You may need to put a screwdriver in there a little bit and help it out but just take your time and get it open and then you'll be able to clean that contact up and get that carbon and the other stuff that's built up over years of arcing cleaned up and this switch will probably work for many more years before it has an issue again. A little bit of fine grade sandpaper will work out just fine. There's only one contact in the switch. You'll easily see it. It's a little bit spring loaded and just pull that switch apart a little bit and put a little piece of sandpaper down in there. It really isn't critical what grit you use. Just anything in there. Get that carbon out of there and then use a little bit of alcohol or a little bit of deoxid or whatever you've got on that contact just to clean up the, the grit you're going to leave behind from that sandpaper. And I've done this before on a Lafayette receiver and the power switch has worked for years. It's been fine. Doesn't mean it's always going to work forever but it's a lot better having a working power switch than no power switch at all and you having to power it off a power strip or some other method. After getting the contact cleaned up, I went ahead and reassembled the switch assembly and then I'm going to now put it back into the chassis, get it soldered in, and give it a try. I went ahead and I turned on the SX550 and the lights were nice, bright, and steady. All that flickering was gone. So that repaired it. And this is one of those parts 
that are hard to come by. I tell you guys, most of the time you can get parts for this equipment and you can, but an item like this power switch, you can't buy from Mauser or DigiKey. The biggest issue I had with this repair was getting the power switch out of the chassis. Your piece of equipment that has a power switch like this may be easier, maybe more difficult, because I've seen several units with power switches like this one and having an identical problem. So I hope this helped you all out. And for you guys who haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you'd consider even subscribing to my channel. And you guys have been around for a while. As always, thank you so much for subscribing and watching the videos. Y'all have a good day.